This episode of Finding Demo Surf Fishing is being brought to you by The Sinker Guy. Head on over to thesinkerguy.com and take a look at all the stuff that Chip's got going on in The Sinker Guy Garage. He's got the Bruno rig. We've all been hearing about it how good it is because we don't talk about Bruno. The Mortician rig, one of the most universal made rigs to be able to switch in at different times while you're fishing. Such an outstanding rig. Sinkers, terminal tackle, got you covered. So again, head on over to thesinkerguy.com. Take a look at all that stuff. Get your order in. Very quick shipping. Awesome customer service. Oh yeah, welcome to another week everybody, hope you're doing well, everything has been going glorious here, I'm sorry if you uh, you missed last Friday's episode, also known as the no episode, I didn't want to drop anything on uh, Black Friday, wish I could have had a voice vote changer for that, yeah I didn't want to drop an episode on you guys, you should have been out there doing your own thing and it's family time so I didn't want to bug you with that, this week though, man, we're going international again, yeah buddy. I'm loving these international episodes. These are a lot of fun. This time, though, we are heading to South Africa. Now, I've read throughout my life that South Africa fishing is amazing. The pinnacle, so many different great buzzwords that it's just outstanding and you got to experience it sometime in your life. So I went on a hunt for you all. I went looking and I found a charter captain that has been crushing it in all facets of fishing out there in South Africa. We're going to be talking with Go Fish Tours, and you can find them on all forms of social media. They're on Facebook at gofish.mosselbay, Instagram, Sean underscore May underscore Fishing underscore Guide, and YouTube. They have their channel up there. I will have the links all back in the episode, and you should go back and seriously take a look at all the stuff that they've been doing. Sean and his team have been crushing it, posting about it and showing all the uh, available options they have for you to go take a look at. So if you're thinking about going to South Africa, or if you're in South Africa and you've been looking for a charter to finally go out and see, this is a damn good option. So without me flipping my jibs for this whole episode, welcome to the show, Sean. Thanks, man, for coming on. Hey, thanks, guys, for having us. (laughs) Ah, This is great. I mean, it's only evening there and morning here. It's perfect, you know. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's <laughs> sun sitting on this side. <laughs> yeah, we'll take we'll take the sun from here. We got some fishing to do today. I mean, we'd, we got we we'll, we're all for it. So it's um. Let's see here. So us right now, it's we're moving into fall, which means you are starting to move into your springtime. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna go into summer now. Spring is in September here by us. So it's just out of spring into summer now. Or that's what it's supposed to do, but it's still cold here. It still looks like winter. I don't know whether it's weird right around the world at the moment. But yeah, it's supposed to be summer rice. Yep. Yeah, it is. It is a little weird around the world. So before we even get into the real questions here, I'm going to ask. So with winter fishing, does things slow down there or not really? Um, normally if we, we, our fishing just changes from summer to winter. So we get, um, our summer fish and winter fish, but I must say the last four or five years, um, the guys actually started preferring the winter fishing. Um, fishing is a bit slower in winter as in summer, but the, the size of the fish are just ridiculous. Um, we have amazing fish this summer this this all year winter last summer season this whole winter season and going into the summer now has definitely been our best fishing season in 16 years definitely um we had crazy winter sessions um for for us it, it we've got a, a a big upper hand in the fishing as we fish literally every day i've got three or four guys on the beach we've got the boats out so we stay on track of the fish we we stay on track of the movement of the fish and and what's happening because the guys are out there literally every day and i must say that gives us the upper hand on knowing what the fish movements are doing where to go and where to go with clients so we might we we very blessed um in that in that part of the world because we follow the fish and we, we stay right on top of them putting the clients onto the bigger fish that's smart. I mean, every day out there constantly grinding, whether you're on or off, and you know what the fish are doing. Yeah. That's great, man. And and the winter yes. fishery turned out <laughs> a good year for you guys, huh? 
Yeah, no, definitely one of our best winters ever. Wow. Yeah, we had the worst summer ever here for us. It, the, the Florida, <laughs> I don't know what it was. This this summer has been, I, I want to say, one of the worst in Florida uh, from what I was understanding from the fishing world as far as the surf went. We had a lot of uh, what we call June grass that basically just coated Ooh, the whole no. grounds. You couldn't fish barely at all this whole summer, which was odd, mm. and it lasted. I mean, it, it finally yeah. broke maybe around September, maybe October. It was weird. So I, it's yeah. nice to hear somewhere so in the world the fishing is still good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, Sean. So let's talk. About, let's let's go into the normal rotation here. We'll get into the questions. And thanks for answering that one right away because I'd, I'd always wondered how your fishery was, and I know we'll ask more into that. But tell us your story and what yeah. got you into fishing. Yeah, I've been fishing with my dad, and we fished competitively when I was small. Um, and then I started getting more competitive. Um, I got chosen for the South African team when I was like 14 years old. I think I was one of the youngest Spivak anglers or South African anglers at the time. Um, and I was still in school, and guys would always beg us, yes, please come take us fishing. We can't catch anything. So then after <laughs> school, the guys will come and get me at home, and I'll go fishing with them. I loved it. Because I get to go fish with these guys and I can go fish where I want to. And that's just where it started. And after schools on holidays, when I finally got my license, South Africa, you have to be 18 to get your driver's license. So then I could actually start taking clients out. And the guys, yes, we started. I charged the guys 100 rand <laughs> back then. It's like <laughs> almost nothing uh, just to get out and just to just to get out fishing and that's just how it grew and it's like I realized yes there's a big opportunity here because I I can't even take everyone fishing and it just grew from there on and I just took the step and take more and more clients and then I bought a tackle shop (laughs) and then I started small and just that just grew and we got another tackle shop and we got the boats and I got guides working for me training the guys up my one guide's been with me now for like 14 years already so the guy knows the ins and outs. They well trained guys, very professional guys, and that's just where we are at the moment. That's just step by step, um, moving forward and learning every day. Man, so you you started out as a kid, enjoying it, started yeah. taking friends, and then you <laughs> bought a one tackle shop, bought another. Man, you have built the business all around it all. That's so cool. Congratulations. Yeah. No, thanks so much. Yeah, literally we started the small tackle ship. It was probably like four meters by six meters long. Very small. <laughs> that is a that is a little small shack right there. Okay, cool. And now <laughs> yes. and now you have kind of a, a couple more or, or buildings. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a big. Um. We've got the two big big stores, and then we've got the boats, and then I've got a big factory where we make fiberglass cooler boxes for the hunting and fishing industry. Really. Wow. Yes. Okay. What what's the name of the comp what's the, <laughs> now you got me I got my pen out. What's the name of the tag or the uh Ooh, the coolers? It, it's called Go Frush Chillers. All right. Yeah, go go frush chillers. And how do you spell the is jo, go F I S H chillers? Yeah. Well, nice. Okay. F-I-S-H, I will yeah. I will make sure I tag that back in the episode. That is so cool that you're making these. I can't wait to look it up. Man. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I'm excited for you. Yeah, you've got you've got the business, <laughs> and you've got different pieces of this. You you've really done the whole act. I mean, you you've done the spider web. You're getting all the angles. That's yeah. so oh, like pump yeah, for you, it. man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. You have to in South Africa have to pull all the strings to get it working. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So for your personal time, what type of fishing do you like to do? Anything with the fish are biting. <laughs> yeah, it's a difficult question. All, everyone also uh, always asks me, so what do you like to do? I say, I hate sitting next to the beach knowing I'm not going to catch anything. So right. I'll, if, if we got our family day, my wife's also South African English. She's also got a South African color. So we'll just decide, okay, we'll wake up in the morning, we'll check what the weather has done the last three days, and we'll know exactly that today it's no point in going to target something you know that's not going to bite. So go and target something that's actually going to, Gonna take your bait. Um, 
we've got so many different species in South Africa, so many different points or different bays. Like for you guys, you got island on the on the west and the east coast. For us, I can drive five kilometers and I'll be on the west side or the east side because we've got these bays and little points. Okay. So we've got so many options and so many different structures and so many different reef species that for us, it is literally just checking the weather, knowing what's going to bite where. But one thing I can't do is sit on a sit on a boat or sit on the sand and know in my heart that there's not going to be a fish in this water. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that, yeah. that piece of advice right there is something that I think a lot of anglers don't think about. They're just like, I'm just going to go fish. And it's like, well, yeah, if no, you're going to go target, like that. right, you can't go target permit or uh, you know, bluefish if they're not there and you know they're not going to bite. Why are you yeah, targeting that's them? It. That's smart. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. Okay. So you. Yeah, they always say fishermen's got the most patience. I disagree. I'm the most impatient guy in the world. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't get a bite at half an hour, we move. If I said done, there's nothing here. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. But I think that comes with the years of experience. If you know that fish must be in that area and you're baiting there and he's not taking it, then they, not, they are there. Because I, I spearfish uh, as well. We dive there a lot. So. You'll get guys and we'll we'll know the fish are there because we know the area and we know the structure and the weather's right and there'll be a guy fishing and telling but the fish are there they're just not biting and then they're always there's always this argument no they're not they've been here the whole day and we get in the water and you shoot them one i swim back i said okay here's your fish go home you've got it now <laughs> so yeah the, the, fish, the fish doesn't always bite yeah and you can't make yeah, them because do. we Far down low and uh, on on the coast as well. We we get the the Cape of Gala storms here and everything, and the the baromic pressures up and down and up and down. So it plays a very big role uh, on our coast. Okay, yeah, I can see that for sure. Well, what's your favorite yeah. thing about fishing? For me now, it's just the excitement on a client. I mean, if we get clients that's never fished before, and you see this guy's dream, I, I, I've, I can show you videos of where the cameraman filmed. The, uh, we, we did a series where, where I told the, one of my camera guys, I said, um, <clears throat> forget about the fishing. I, I've, we've got enough videos of fishing. I've got so many videos of guys catching a fish, and, and the guys love it. But for me, it's boring because that, that's not what it's about. I mean, I, I told my guys, f focus on the emotions. And and as soon as we did that um, on a few tours where, where I told the cameraman, forget about the fish he's catching, forget about how he's reeling the thing in, forget about everything else. I want to see that guy's emotion in his face. And, and I took um, some guys to Angola. We did a tour there. And this one guy, old guy, I'll never forget it. His dream was to catch a big cop. But he's a South African guy. But those fish are extremely tricky. And he went to Angola with us. And this guy caught uh, a big fish, 35, 38 kilo cob, which is a, a decent sized cob. Um, and he just cried like hysteric hysterically, like uncontrollable, ugly cry. And that, that, just, that just gave me the meaning of why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? If a guy comes, he flies right across the world. Um, and his dream is to catch a, a 200 kilo shark. And f for us, for, for me to go catch a 200 kilo shark is like for you guys to just walk to the beach and catch something. If you, I'm going to catch it. It's there. There's so <laughs> many of them. But if you take that away, if you take your emotions out and actually look at the emotions of the client and how he's enjoying it and, and the experience he's having in it, and that just gives a whole new meaning to the sport and meaning to why we do this. Um, and that's why we were just pushed to just to keep it for the future generation as well. It's just to because let the let everyone experience it. Nah, yeah, man, the feeling is there. That's that is the, <laughs> that is the key. I mean, getting that smile, get uh, yeah. and, and an ugly cry. Oh, come on, totally worth it. Oh, no, it's so <laughs> worth it. <laughs> it's not in tears. <laughs> no, tears of happiness for catching that monster. Yeah, dude, congratulations on doing yeah, that. Yeah. That's phenomenal. He'll never forget that for the rest of his life. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, in your personal time, what is your favorite fish to target? Um, I definitely say those big top and up in Angola North. Definitely, there's not much that can beat that in that area. You know, average top and up in North Angola is between 80 and 100 kilos. So that those is, are very special fish. That is um, not a small fish. On the color lines. 
But yeah, yeah, well, they've got very, they've got very big fish up there. But like I say, you can also get your days there where the weather's not right. Then we go and target something that's biting. For me, I just want action the whole time. Okay, all right. What is a bucket list fish for you to catch? So many, <laughs> <laughs> all the ones I haven't caught yet. <laughs> uh, that is, isn't that the truth though? It's like, oh, there's one. No, there's like forty I want to catch. Come on. <laughs> oh man. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's just something new. Um, we do tours up in Mozambique as well, and and that coast up up between Mozambique and Somalia. That's very that they've been tormented by um, pirates and. It's just a very rural area. And if you go fishing there, like I've been fishing my life, I've been fishing 32 years. Sometimes I go there and a client will catch something on a jig and I'll just like, um, I'm not sure if we should touch that thing. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's even <laughs> seen something like that on the internet. Let's rather just um, be careful here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so for me, that's the excitement is, especially on the slow pitch jigs on, on those rural areas, you never know what you're going to catch. And then sometimes you think, yes, somebody saw this thing somewhere and decided to make an alien movie. That, that, that's where they get these crazy ideas for these alien movies is on these fish yeah <laughs> yeah I, that just brings the excitement you never know what is gonna grab yeah I, yeah I can imagine there so i was i ended up spending i think it was almost two months in uh, djibouti so i remember looking at the water like oh wow, wow it looks really clean and then talking to one of the Djiboutians, they're like oh no, that's not clean do no 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 that is not clean water stay out of that so I, I learned quite a bit about the Horn of Africa and the differences in water off the coast there. So they, I, can, yeah. I can understand what you're saying. Where, yeah, no, no. where are you all located in South Africa? I mean, granted, it's a big, big country and you got a lot of land there all the way down from Cape Town running all the way yeah. I mean, over to Durban. Where are you at? I'm, I'm in Mossel Bay. Uh, that's about 350 kilometers from Cape Town. So yeah, all my clients will fly either into Johannesburg or Cape Town and then just do a bounce flight from there to George Airport. That's about 20 minutes away from me. Okay, so you're down. Okay, so you got that nice, that yeah. southern, southern tip. Yes, we're on the southern tip, yes. But we've got lots of bay. So we, I'm basically, I live in Tanabai. And then nine kilometers to my left, we have Mossel Bay. And 10 kilometers to my right, we have Bochum's Bay, Fleers Bay, Canon, and Horitz, which are all bays and big points. It's like massive bays. So if we have a west wind, I literally fish in the inside of the bay out of the wind. If we have an east wind, we fish on the other side. So we're very blessed. with Weather doesn't really affect us at all. Currents doesn't really affect us at all. And even if we have a seven, eight meter swell, we literally just fish on the other side of the bay then because then the waves will eat that side of the point. Yeah. If, if for listeners, if you haven't zoomed into the map of South Africa, you, especially in this area that he's talking about, I mean, you could just go into the Cape Town portion, portion of the map and you've got one massive, you got False Bay, which is a giant, absolutely yeah. huge. Yeah. But you can go over to Kogel Bay or, and then run down a little bit. What is that? Pringle, uh, Pringle Bay. Bay. But I mean, yeah. just playing here, you got Moss Bay and then, oh, you know what? Hey, it's not working out for me today at Moss, Moss Bay. We got that bad wind. You can just roll over to, what is that, Gro Gro uh, Groot Bay? Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah, yeah. There's so many bays. Yeah, you've got a great fishery. I mean, inland, a lot of this, yeah. um, one one of the ones that caught my eye was uh, uh, Fisher Haven down south there. Uh, yes. it, it looks a lot like Pensacola, like our area. You've got, hey, you know what? Hey, we've got the uh, we got the big water here to the south, and then let's go inland. We can go. What is that? Bot River Lagoon. We can go inland into the lagoon there, or we can go into the intercoastal. That that is a ton of fishing land. That's just that that's got to be a lot of fun for you to have so many options. Yeah. The most of the area that we fish, I normally don't have to drive more than 40 kilometers, kilometers either way from my house and you will have more than enough space to do exactly what we need to do. Ah, it's absolutely brilliant, man. Great setup for you guys to be set for success. Well, you've, I mean, you talked yeah, about going from South nice. Africa all the way to Somalia and that is a, that's a long, I mean, that, that's some distance right there. That's a serious, 
bit of travel. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, and <laughs> with the boats too. I mean, you have a fleet. You have you know you have the charter boats where you can go out do overnights, long trips. I saw that when I was going through your uh, website. Do you also yes. go over um, through those ones? Do you kind of stay just onto the south southern tip there, or do you try to push up uh, over to? Uh, I mean, I heard you talk about Mozambique. Uh, do you take the yeah. boats through there, so or is that something different? Yeah, my my boats stay in Mossel Bay. We pull them between. My boats will move between Mossel Bay and Cape Town for the tuners, the big tuna run, and all of that. Okay. But that will be between Cape Town and Mossel Bay. We can do stray spy and still buy in all those little places. But that's basically the area my boats stay because they're big boats. And then we have boats in the lodges that we work with in uh, Mozambique. And wherever we go, we have deals with the lodges. So um, we just use their boats for the time being that we are there. Because we, we work, we don't work with, uh, with, we work with the lodges, but we don't use um, their tackle or their stuff because we'll, we'll take our stuff. We'll fly all our tackle and our guides with. So if a guy comes there, you'll fish with, with my god i won't i won't send a group there um just to the lodge to fish with the lodge we will physically fly our tackle up there and our guides up there to fish with the guys while they're there oh, okay so the fish the fishing the, the fishing seasons in south africa um like i said i'll i'll send two guys up or me and a guide will go up to to angola north for instance and we'll stay there for two or three or four months while in the in the fishing season because we are so down, so low south, the weather impact is very big. So you'll have, we'll we'll have a pattern that we worked out through the years and say, okay, you're like, let me work on Angola North. We will know that the fish will start biting in November there, but the peak season over the last ten years will be January, February, March. So I would put out my dates within those three three months and we'll fly up we'll stay there for three months to do the peak season that we know the fish are there and then we'll fly to the next destination so we'll fish um, mozambique in february march and april and then we'll fly to angola south for six months in the winter and while the we'll always leave guides in Mosul bay as well to do the fishing here so we just move in the peak in the peak seasons of the of which area it is Wow, that is a lot of ground. I mean, you've got what, Angola, Nambia, one, two, South Africa, three, Mozambique, four. That I mean, that's four countries alone right there in just that tip that you guys yes. are fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's without the Mosul Bay and the Cape Vaca and all those places. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It's absolutely. It is. It's uh, we on right on top of the fish everywhere. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm just, I'm, yeah. like, I'm like smiling over here for, I, I'm excited. I'm not even there. That's so amazing. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're hitting so many different pieces because, I mean, what, that's 7, 14, almost in the American side here, I'll say, I mean, that's 7, 14, 2,000 miles essentially from Cape Town to Luanda uh, in, in northern Angola. Yes. That's yeah Hell for the... me we when when we drive from my house to the northern part of angola that's about 4900 kilometers yeah that that's and in your running charters a long, a long drive and this isn't just for you just fishing <laughs> this is for your charter business this is you setting them up going yeah, for yeah, customers yeah. yes 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 all right, I gotta ask because I'm. I mean, I've, I've got the map up obviously, and I'm. I'm making sure I get everything written down proper because like I'm a visual. I'm a visual <laughs> person, so I can see. Okay, I see where you're talking yeah. about with the northern and the southern. Um, and Madagascar is obviously off to your west, and you got the Mozambique Channel. Yeah. Do you do you go into the Madagascar area, or do you just stay uh, hard into the South African coast? Um, the big problem that we had with Madagascar is it's very, the cyclones hit it very hard. So it's very difficult to plan a tour there with a group of guys. Yeah. They they are cheap, but if you go if you go to do what you want to do, you have to, you can't go to the to the commercial hotspot guys because those the the eye there is fish. It is good fishing in that, but if you want to target your upper class fish your world record class fish, fish, then you have to go to the areas that they don't fish. And 
to do that, that's on the wild side of, of Madagascar. And the, the problem we have with that, it's a very short season and it's it's yeah, you tour miss. You can get there. I've been to Mauritius with clients for three weeks that we didn't get one day to go out to sea. Literally, we landed with the plane. They rushed us to, to our house. We got there. We had no idea what's going on because they speak real there. No one can understand that. It's the weirdest language in the world. <laughs> and they got these big roller shutters over the windows and we were like what's going on and there wasn't we were literally the only car on the road and Mauritius is normally just full of traffic we were just going for it and they said we're not even allowed to be on the road and we didn't know what's happening in the next minute this massive cyclone hit us and we couldn't go home and we couldn't fish and we just got locked up in this place without food anything and <laughs> and that's a very risky thing for the wild side of Madagascar you don't want to go sit there in a, in a little house for two weeks and not be able to fly out but I had a guy now who had fished with us in Angola, um, Marcel's his name. We are planning on a thing there. He's busy setting up a, a, a setup there for us. As soon as they're done building the houses and everything, then we're definitely going to definitely gonna start um, doing trips and see how it goes there because they also spearfish a lot um, and he loves the So on the good days ago, and there's definitely some very good um, – world record class fish in the area that that he's fishing that's going to be a lot of fun i look forward to seeing that on the youtube channel i know you're going to post some good things after that gets done bait check this is the first bait check of the episode make sure you reel that line in double check to make sure you still got bait on that hook if you haven't caught yet make sure you change that bait get something else out there because apparently the fish doesn't like what you're chewing on so get it back out this bait check is being brought to you by Ninja Tackle. Head on over to NinjaTackleVA.com and take a look at all the awesome things that Matt and his team have put together for you to pick out. The Ninja Dagger rods, all the way from 7 to 12 footers. Love those rods. You guys know I have them. I fish them. I, I cannot, I can't endorse them enough because I've put them through some hell and they keep coming back and just awesome sets of gear. Maybe you need some rigs. They got you covered there. They got a whole bunch of different sets that'll cover you all the way from the panhandle to the north uh, northeast of the United States. Reels, he's got a bunch of sets there with the Accios brand and maybe some other rods too. He's got those other pieces. Or maybe you need some optics for your firearm. Ninja Tactical. Lots of good stuff in the Ninja Tactical side to get your hands on, get you all set up for success. NinjaTackleVA.com. Get your order in. Get it all set up for this year. All right, so now that we've talked about that and we're moving into the guiding business, we've been talking a little bit more on there. Let's uh, let's push through. So what got you into guiding, it sounds like from the earlier piece, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like you're, <laughs> the kids that you were with, they are like, hey, take us out, and that kind of just started the build. Is that correct? Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I grew up from a very young age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, a business owner, <laughs> what was that? Before you were 18, you were already starting your own business. And, and then you yeah, just grew man, into it. Yeah, I was like four, 14 already. <laughs> <laughs> Start the yeah. entrepreneurship early. Okay. Well, uh-huh. um, only way. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that we've said that, um, so if a client goes on the website, they have a myriad of options to choose from for a guided trip. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, we have figured out the websites a bit much. We are simplifying it. We're in a process now where we had uh, we had guys phoning us a media company that said, "Listen here, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they don't even know what's going on on the on the website." The problem for me is I'm a South African fisherman. I I don't even know how Instagram works. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just told the guy a few years ago, "Build me a website." And he did what he could, and um, yeah, like, I don't, I don't, I don't really. I don't really know much about the internet and that so this company just found us and said, listen, yeah, another one guy and he said, um, we need to, re- <laughs> we need to redo this. <laughs> so they're busy with it. We're going to simplify it. And, um, the funny thing is he phoned me the other day and he said, Hey, Sean, you know, you still have dates and prices on for Angola tours 2017. I'm like, no way, it's really. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how far I am behind with social media and internet or stuff. I just had to post a photo on Facebook and there we go. <laughs> so yeah, they are in the process of simplifying things a bit and um, getting it going. Yeah, that's on my department. <laughs> 
Okay. They have to get the guys. I'll take them fishing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> I mean, we all we all need a media department. I understand. I it's, yeah. That's one part of my brain is my media department. This is you know I got this part of the brain for this department. My other one for my other business. So I get that. Uh, so let's let's look at the yeah. surf fishing side. Let's talk. We'll concentrate on the beach one for now. What comes with going on a beach fishing charter? For me, um, in Mossel Bay, the best will be to do the Cape Vaca tour. We have a house on a, we've got a private nature reserve that's owned by one of my friends. Um, it's called Cape Vaca. It's on the point between Horitz and Bochum's Bay. Um, it's a four star house. There's only one house on the entire um, private nature reserve. So no one can bug us. You can do everything and the water on one of the best fishing spots in South Africa is not even 20 meters from the front door. Um, they placed that house, and the house is over 100 years old already. His grandfather built it and they built it up and it is literally on the best fishing spot in South Africa. It is covered, the big waves can't get there. You can fish there every single day in the biggest storm there is. And it's got all the structure on your uh, right in front of the house is where we catch those massive sharks and rays and edibles and whatever you want to do. And 300 meters to the right side is the end of the point. Then we have the wild side. So you've got the waves breaking there, rolling onto a nice reef in a private nature reserve. So that means we've got all the species there. If you go and sit there the whole day, you can literally catch species after species after species after species. Um, so if what we do normally, we'll leave one guy with the rods in front of the house. They'll always stay in the water um, while we fry or whatever, and make food. Rods always in the water when we go to bed. We just open the front windows and stick the rods through the window and put them under the bed and you'll wake up with the <laughs> giant drill screaming. <laughs> and in the daytime, we'll leave one guy with the rods and then the rest of the guys will be on the reefs catching species for the guys that's all out there to catch species. So that's definitely one of the most comfortable fishing experience. There is not many places like that in the world. It is an extremely special place. Um, and that will just definitely be the one I would say for somebody to come to South Africa for. If you want to come there, definitely that's the one. I mean, it sounds like the one you bring your whole family to. You, hey, I want to go fish. The rods are yes, right there and everyone else is what relaxing in nature. Does, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's definitely. Oh, no, it is a very, very, very special place. Well, with this location, you were saying that basically there's tons of things to catch. Is there a specific target species yes. or is it, hey, we're going fishing and what do you want to catch? We're going to put you on what you want to catch. Yeah, we can do that. Um, most of the clients will tell us beforehand, well, we, they want to catch this or that or that. But um, everyone, of course, wants to catch the big shark. Um, we've got so much time that the guys are tired. Okay, we've been fishing on the rocks, let's go for lunch. There's a shark rod in. So when whatever we're doing, it's literally an area of two, 300 meters. So you can be standing fishing for whatever species you want to catch. And you can just literally turn around and you'll still see your big shark rods in the water we, we, we lots of times we'll be standing there and you'll just see a rod flat to the sea and there's 200 kilo of bronze on the other end and then you just have to run like hell to get there <laughs> but yeah oh, but but the species is like i say it's so easy for us we know exactly where they are so if a guy tells me listen yeah i really want to catch this or this in this trip um our tours are normally between four or five or six days so we'll we'll pick a the weather we'll check out the weather for that week and we'll make a plan and just tell the guy okay the weather's right here for this let's let's leave today leave the shock today and we'll get in the car if we need to drive to another place it's very close you go for breakfast catch something there and then go back get the guys what they want but by us like we say it's not as like the fishing by you guys we have hundreds and hundreds of different species of fish by us and most of them when, when we fish for species on the reef, we'll use a kind of bait that all reef fish will eat. And if we fish on the sand, we'll use a piece of bait that all the sand species will will eat and vice versa. And, and that just opens up the whole area to catch more than all the target species. Well, you've definitely got your game dialed in. You've been at this so long. That makes a lot of sense. And that's very smart. And so that piece there. Yeah. One thing you said caught my ear was 
you're talking about a six day evolution. This is an all inclusive. This isn't a one day in and out. Uh, do you offer the one day thing, or is it this is what we offer? Yeah, is the yes, weekly? we do. No, yeah, yeah, we definitely because lots of guys come here on holiday and they decide, oh, today's a good day. We want to go fishing, or they'll phone us and tell us, okay, we're here for this week. We just got this and this planned. What can we do on Wednesday? And then we'll check the weather and tell them, okay, this and this and this is uh, your options. What do you want to do? We wow. also have the 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 cage diving and most of the international guys come here to swim with the great whites. Um, and that's then when we incorporate either the hunting or the fishing or whatever with the guys. Yeah, no, no, I'm good. <laughs> great. Whites. <laughs> great, great whites are, uh, they're really cool to watch on TV for me. That's just me personal. Nah, that, that's really puppies, cool. Man. We, swim, we swim with them almost every week when we go spear fishing. They, they just another shock. Uh, it's just got a bad name to them. It's like a pit bull. I've got pit bulls at home as well. They're the most gentle dog. My pit bulls never even done anything. But everyone's scared of a pit bull. It's exactly the same. <laughs> I, you know, it's really weird for me, and people are going to judge, and I'm okay with that. I'm actually not worried about getting bit <laughs> by a great white. I mean, the, we, the bites from a great white are not common. Right? I guess for us here in the U.S., it's more bull sharks yeah. and a couple others. It's the speed. Yeah. The sheer speed of that fish, it, it's a, a little terrifying for me of how quickly they can turn their bodies and move. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. I don't want that kind of surprise in yeah. the water. <laughs> yeah, for us, we say used to them, they just did a, just another shot. Yeah. You must, you must, you must just know you, you saw him, then they all relax. <laughs> okay, I'll remember that if I ever try to get into the cage. <laughs> I'm good. Um, so uh, w- with running a charter, versus your personal day of fishing how is that how is there a difference for you or is there a difference for you um yeah in the charter i don't fish at all well i'll I'll fish with the guys i'll do everything for the guys i'll cast in and put bait on and everything i'll help the guys out but um for me on a personal thing if i go fishing for myself i I've been targeting big fish my entire life that uh, that was my drive in the beginning and um always wanted to go bigger and better and just more and more and more size for the photo and thing and i'm i'm now as i'm getting older realizing the the fun side too so for me we've i like in just taking a smaller rod sometimes i'll go to a, a reef section that i know is going to be productive and and i literally just want to speed angle like see how many species you can catch with different things or or just if you always want to try something new it's just take that time and de- develop something or do something new that will help a new guy, new bait tactics or different traces or just something like that. I like to play around on my own, but I always say that, but I never actually get the time, the time to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, when we go, then I would um, definitely go for the smaller things and catch the more species and try something new and, as in the tackle shop so we always want to stay ahead so we try something new and see if this works and make a plan here or try something else well that's i mean how that's fishing if you're not trying something new i mean are you you're becoming a dinosaur you're going to go extinct you got to try the new yeah. things to get, become better faster yeah yeah no definitely 100 so you talked about tailoring well we kind of talked about this a little bit now if a customer and this is great for the whole international community because you've got people that live in south africa that are obviously going to want to go on charters and then you've got people that are going to travel into south africa because for them for holiday you know some people are going to want to run down there and get those how do you tailor your trips to the customer yeah every tour we do is um is gonna be custom built for the guys but during the years, we've got lots of international guys that come here every year. We already know what they want to do. They've already done everything. So for them, it's just easy. They'll, most of the guys will phone me, hey, we're coming this day and that day. Let's see you then. It's done. <laughs> so speak to them for the whole year again and you just pick them up. Um, but the thing is, with, with our clients, they've been coming every year for so many years already that we actually became such good friends. We, play, we chat to all in the WhatsApp groups. We've got a Go Fish family WhatsApp group. And... Um, Actually, you've just become family with the guys. You've become such good friends and you really know the guys. They invite us there and vice versa. It just becomes fun where where a client just turns into actually being a a proper good friend on the other side of the world. And we speak regularly with the guys. So 
Yeah, that's a, that's just the, the point of the whole thing is you get a guy he tells us, um, Lauren, my wife, is on the computer most of the time. So it, she'll always ask the guys, okay, you want to come for fishing these days? And these days, do you want to do any extra activities? And the guys will tell us this. Or the good thing for us is everything that we can uh, we can um, add to to the tour is within, like I said, a 30, 40 kilometer range from my house or wherever they will stay. So it's very close. So if a guy wants to tell me, listen here, I want to come on a fishing trip, but I would also like to hunt. There's six or seven game farms within 40 kilometers from my house. So we'll fish two days. We'll tell the guys, listen here, the weather's good for the hunting on the farm on this day. Let's make this our rest day. Then we go hunting and we go do this or go do cage diving or the guys want to, we've got that, the world's longest zipline thing over the sea. They want to go do that. We said, okay, the fishing's going to be bad this section of the day. Let's go do it then. So we just, actually the guys just tell us, listen, yeah, this and this, and this is what we want to do. And then when they get here, we see what the weather is going to do because you don't want to plan ahead and then tell the guy, okay, on Wednesday, we're going to go hunting. And then Wednesday is your best fishing day. Right. So we always tell the guys, listen, you tell me what you want to do. We'll do it. But we, we're going to focus on the fishing. We're wow. going to be fishing on the good fishing days and with the bad fishing times, we're going to go. So you got like an, oh my gosh, that my, my head hurts. You have a whole outdoor <laughs> Mecca. There's everything yeah, no, there. We've got, we've got everything. There. Yeah, no, everything. And my boat is permanently on the boat. If the guys want to go out on a deep sea trip, because you see, listen, yeah, the sea's flat as a pond. The fishing's going to be good on the deep sea. You just drive around, get on the boat. The boat's on the mooring in the harbor. There's no launching, nothing. You literally get on the boat. The tackle's always ready on the boat. You just get on and you go. Wow, Sean. Way to go on this whole <laughs> thing. I mean, you, my goodness, that is so much awesomeness in one little package to be able to go to your, to go through you. I mean, I can go fishing, you can go hunting, you can do nature preserves, you can do a, a house. Everything is all set up where you could basically just it, contact you or, or Laura and be like, Hey, this is what I want to do. Can we do this? And it's all set up. Yeah. And no, everything is done. Yeah. Wow. I mean, she's yeah, we all, yeah, no, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's the, that is the right word. I mean, for sure. And she is very responsive to emails. I mean, I sent my email to you. I know we're at an eight hour time difference. I sent my email to you. I think it was midday my time. Um, and first thing in the morning when she woke up, she responded to my email and we were already getting a dialogue back and forth to get in touch with you that I mean, you were very yeah, on, no, on the awesome. spot with this. Yeah, no, you have to be. Well, Okay, so if people want to book these charters and these adventures, I mean, the whole thing, how do people, how do you, how do you want people to reach out to you to discuss this stuff? Um, mostly through Lauren, because I'm fishing most of the days in this like in South Africa, like I told you, the signal is terrible. Um, so Lauren is on the Wi-Fi at home in the office, wherever she is, she'll always be near Wi-Fi. So it's definitely info at gofishtours.com. Um, that's our name and the website and the email address. It's everything info at gofishtours.com. And um, if they want to speak directly to me, they can just send me a WhatsApp. Um, I'll get the WhatsApp whenever whenever I have signal. Um, most people will just chat to me on the WhatsApp. And Lauren will also give my number through the email if guys want to speak directly to me. But I won't probably be as responsive because I'm on the boat and busy with the clients most of the time. So. Yeah, and I said her name wrong. I'm sorry. It was Lauren, not Laura. I apologize. Please uh, yeah, Lauren. No, no. T- tell Lauren I'm sorry if she listens to this. I am so sorry. <laughs> I did not mean to mess that up. <laughs> well, yeah. one, last, yeah, one last question about the business side here before we move on to the next side. What have been some valuable lessons learned after starting and running your business ventures? Yeah, there's so many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get knocked down. If you get knocked down, stand up, go again. Yeah, I feel the most important thing I would say and the lesson that um, that I've probably learned the hardest is you must never forget to enjoy what you're doing. The second the second your heart's not in it, um, get out. Um, because then you're doing something wrong. If if you can't enjoy what you're doing, if you can't um, if you can't smile with your clients, then then you, you shouldn't be in that business. Great piece of advice right there. Seriously, great piece of advice. Yeah. Yes, no, definitely. I would say that is the most important thing. 
All right. Well, you've already moved into another section here, so we're going to transition into the third section. It is your second bait check of the episode. Hopefully by now you've caught all the fish and you're already on your way home and you're listening to this podcast on the way home. And if you haven't, you're still at the beach just enjoying the day. Don't forget to bring that line back in. Check your bait. Maybe you need to switch it up. Maybe you need to go for more synthetic or maybe you need to use fresh bait. Change it up. Let's catch more fish. This bait check is being brought to you by DS Custom Tackle. DSCustomTackle.com. Take a look at all the things that he's got in the shop in there. I mean all. He's got a ton. Are you a rig maker? He's got you covered. Hooks floats, different uh, swivels, all these pings put together to get your gear all set up. He's got this new setup in where you got white floats and you can customize those floats. So if you are a artist and you like to paint a certain way on your floats, you've heard the different colors. They've got a blank slate for you to be able to order and get your hands on the glow in the dark floats. Got them in. They got the new ones too with the sand flea color, but also the new ones with the mesh looking color as well. So you flip it, you got two different sides. DSCustomTackle.com. Order today. Get out there and go fish. Let's move into the tips, tricks, and knowledge thing. So this my, one of my favorite parts of the show is all stealing the knowledge of others because <clears throat> we're all, <laughs> in reality, I mean, the knowledge thing in this whole premise of this podcast was that. Um, I, I believe fully that we all learn from each other, whether it's a, a tip from 1968 or from, uh, you know, to yesterday's lesson. All of these things are important. Mm-hmm. We did an episode not too long ago with uh, Go Fish Australia, and they do a setup where the guide goes out with them, but they also have another uh, trip where they fly out on, Hilo, on a Hilo, and you get to go f- uh, fish with one of the Aborigine tribes. That kind of knowledge from thousands of years pushed in, that's, again, going to make you a better angler wherever you are in the world. It, it's all fishing. So I love this section for this because your knowledge is going to translate to something here in Florida. It might even transfer to something in Texas, California, all the way into the Europe, all that. So how do you personally plan your fishing trips? Yeah, for me, it's 100%. Like I said, we're on the south side, so the weather by us is crucial on your fishing spot, your bait, and whatever you're going to do for the day. We also have, we can have water temperatures, or water's cold, but for us, a very good, very warm water will be between 22 degrees, between 22, 25 degrees is all too hot. That is a, in our peak summer, so... With us, we can have the whole sea will be 25 degrees and literally within two days of a strong southeast, our water can drop to nine degrees, wow. literally overnight. Um, because we so far down, our the water can literally change within a day, half a day in a big south, black southeast storm. Um, so we get these storms very regularly. The currents as we we in the corner, so we've got the... Um, all the, the Mozambique or not current or the cold current. So it all depends on the weather where our water will be moving to. So the, with with our, with the local knowledge, we would know after a big southeast, the listener, yeah, the water has dropped 10 degrees, has dropped 15 degrees. The fish are in shock. They're looking for warm water. So we will know in this corner of that bay, there would be a, a cube of water that is um, trapped there. The hot water is pushed into that corner and all your fish will be there. And so for us, that is the, the upper hand on, on local knowledge. And that is something that you will never know if you don't, if you're not with the local, if you're not with the local that can tell you, listen, yeah, this is what happened. This current runs on this angle. Now the wind has turned that current into the bay and your hot water is going to get stuck in that corner. Wow. And yeah, those thermals are going to make a huge difference of pockets for fish. Massive, massive difference, yeah. Yes, especially we we've got those um, big sand 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 tigers, or what do you call them? We call them ragged tooth sharks. Yeah, um, they absolutely love the cold water areas. Yeah. So if clients want big ones, you'll know. Okay, there's going to be a pocket of cold water there with this wind. Let's go there. No, if color there, you're definitely going to get one. Okay, how do you select your spots to set your fish up <laughs> or your gear up? 
yeah, that's the, that's all going to depend on what the client wants to catch. Right. Um, and then we will just put the whole picture together. I work on a weather pattern of the last week where the fish has been. Like I said, we fish every day. We've got guides on the water every day on the boat and on the side. So my guys report to me every day what's happening. Um, I would know the guy, the boat's been all the way on the east side. The water's cold there. It's green water on the right side. And the guys were fishing from the side, warm water, clean waters on that side. So I would know exactly what the pattern of the water is. And just with one bit of knowledge, I already know, okay, the water's green on that side, the water's clean on that side. So now if we have a west wind, I'll know that hot water will move there and that green water will move into that bay. So you can plan more or less what your next week is going to look like just by knowing one one section of a day what is happening in the area. Do you boat mostly use set rigs or do you throw lures? How, what is something you do with fishing? Um, winter fishing, bait fishing is definitely with 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 traces. Like I said, we have so many different options. We've got yeah. the rocky areas, we've got gravel, we've got sand. Um, once again, depends on what the client wants to catch. Um, some guys, I know you guys like to catch with sliding rigs and stuff like that. We don't at all. Um, I use fixed fix traces, three way swivels is 99.999% my my choice of fishing um the reason for that is if you would take a line from your sinker to the three-way swivel and then from the three-way swivel to your hook if you would draw that in a straight line that um, distance between your sinker and your hook should not be let's say you've got a long trace a meter meter and a half so from the tip of your sinker to the tip of your hook will be a meter, meter and a half with both traces. Now on a sliding rig, the distance, so, so let's say a fish grabs the bait, um, that fish only has to swim a meter and a half away before the sinker sets the hook. But on a sliding rig, the distance between the tension of your rod's tip and the tip of your hook is going to be 150, 180 meters in your cast. So that means that fish has to swim the stretch out before there's enough tension for the hook to set. So that's why in our area we fish three-way swivels before your red rod bends, the hook's already set in the fish's mouth because your wire sink is already set, set the hook. Now, okay, so set rigs with that piece. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Do you use, uh, what kind of hooks do you use? Uh, we mostly use um, circle hooks because of that reason. But for some species, the circle hooks don't work good, then we'll use um, just the lightweight J-hook. Yeah, the, so I've you're the, I wanna say the second or third person now that has said, I, it depends. I'm not always using circle hooks. Sometimes I'm using J-hooks. Yeah, some of our fish are too fast um, for the circle hook, then your circle hook can't set. Um, then we'll definitely use um, the J-hooks. Okay. You said a great point there. I want to. I'd like to talk about that for a second. You mentioned that the fish is too fast and the circle yes. hook doesn't set. What is yes. uh, What what brought you to that? Like, hey, wow, this happens. What what brought you there to see that? Is see with a circle hook. When you fish a circle hook, you don't strike it because the circle hook sits in the corner of the mouth. So what happens? The fish swallows the whole bait, and then the the hook actually has to go the the your your snell knot has to come out for the hook to turn and to set in the fish's mouth now we've got um, lots of reef fish that's bream that's got a small mouth so he they they the bigger the sea is they'll be fish they'll be in between rocks and where the waves are dumping in a six meter swell and you'll think any fish that's in that water will be dead now that's actually where they thrive so they're so used to extreme pressure, extreme currents, extreme waves. So when that fish sees a piece of bait, he literally just grabs it and goes. Because if he misses it now, it's gone. The next wave, everything's upside down. Um, so these small reef fish is with their small mouth. They literally just grab it. And with the next wave hitting it, he'll most of the time doesn't swallow the bait deep enough for that hook to set. So he literally just grabs onto it and then it just pulls the bait off because the hook, the hook didn't actually go into his mouth. So that when we fish that kind of species, then we fish with a with a smaller J hook. But because of um, 
because of the area you're fishing and because of the current and the speed of everything happening, you still look the fish in the, in the corner of the mouth, even with the jay hook, because it's not a fish. There's no time for him to come and actually swallow the bait into his mouth. He literally just grabs onto it and then the hook hooks him in the corner because of that, that set trick between the hook and the sinker. So we're talking different on hooks there. When you're talking about, uh, let's talk about the size though with the J hook. What size are we talking about? Yeah, I don't know how your hook sizes work over there, but for us, I would use like a 2.0 or a 3.0 hook. Um, I know on the numbers side, we we just got stuff from all over the world in the shops, and I don't even know what's going on there, but I think it's a 22 or a 23 in your language, but um, it's like a 2 or 3 hook that we would use. We use 2 aughts, yeah. We, we got the 1 aught and 2 aught. I, I always wonder, I wonder if that is an international yeah. scale now. I'm going to have to look. All right, so kind of on the smaller side. It was side. all the years, but the, the last two or three years since China moved away from just the wholesale and the retail, now, now everything's gone AYR. Uh, I think yeah. each brand just makes, each one just makes up his own number and just goes with that now. Oh, that is so true. <laughs> you can't tell a guy, I want this. You just have to go to the shop and say, this is the size I want. <laughs> this looks cool. Let's take this. <laughs> yeah, because now, I mean, what you've got, you've got tail hooks, which is kind of a circle hook, but not. Then you've got J hooks, but then you've You've got octopus J hooks. Then you've got long shank J hooks. Oh, hold on. Let's Oof. let's throw in another one. Instead of the two aught or the one aught, <laughs> we're gonna go with these other circle hooks that are size. Uh, what is it? A size one is um, re or hot, huge, but then you can go to size six, which is smaller, which is totally bass backwards from our one aught two aught size. So yeah, yeah you're yeah, right. It, it's a whole different language in itself. <laughs> Yeah, I've got 128 different ranges of hook in the tackle shop, so <laughs> oh, <laughs> I really don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> that is so painful. Yeah. Okay, well, so if you're going to go to a new place that you have, uh, you know, hey, I've never fished here before, uh, and you know, like, all right, I'm going to go fish here because I want to try it out, and which is hard for you because you've been doing yeah. this so long, but just imagine yes. back in the day here. Um when you do go to a new fishing place, what do you do when it comes to planning? Find a guide. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good advice. <laughs> Find a guide. <laughs> now I've um, I've been all around the world, um, and there's no ways that you will know. Um, the lucky thing for me is. I'm in the opportunity now where lodges will phone me and say, Sean, we want to work together. Um, we want you to come. And then I always have this deal with the guys. I would come, but I don't want to stay for less than at least two or three weeks where, where I'm with the guide. He's going to show me his first week what they do. Um, then I shut up. He does what he does, shows us exactly the way the lodge operates. And um, then for the next two weeks, I would work with that guide and we'll see how we can combine knowledge and everything to work out there. That's normally the time. Some some lodges, when I go to Angola, my first time in Angola, I went for a month. I literally fished all the facets, rock and surf in the trees fished everything, try new things, same pattern, fish with the guide, get to know the guide, get to know way his style of fishing and understand how the lodge has been operating, what they're doing, and then um, just build up from them. You're never gonna you're never gonna go blind into a place and have success. Yes, you might fluke a fish, but um, you might catch one or two fish in the in, in your holiday there. Um, that's worth it. But if you if you actually just spend the time with the guide for your first few days of the trip, I know we normally have the guys that come here on holiday and they come to the tackle shop and this guy's got all the plans and he buys all his tackle and everything. And um, no, he's going to catch fish. And he, the, this holiday is his fishing holiday. So with the family, they're going to catch fish. And then he's spent his whole holiday here. And now at the end, he realizes, listen, I haven't caught anything. And now his wife and his kids are laughing at him and he decides, listen, yes, I'm just going to book a guy to go and catch fish. And now he comes with us and he says, yes, if I just knew this in the beginning, if I just did this, I would have had so many fish. So I always tell the guys, come with, pay the extra bit 
and just just spend one day with the guys. Let them at least show you what to do, and then you can build yourself for the next of the holiday. Because then you've got the background on the area. You've got the background on on what you're actually doing. So that that's just the rule right around the world. Wherever you go, first get the knowledge and then build from there. Don't try your own thing. It's not going to work. You might catch one or two fish. You might cook them. Yes, it does happen. I've seen crazy things in Mosul Bay with people catching crazy fish called Jacob <laughs> fish by fluke. It does happen. But if if you're going to go on a fishing holiday, get the guide on your first, very first day. Let him show you how they do it and build from there. I mean, it's smart. It's And it's you got to keep your pride in check. I mean, if I'm yeah. traveling somewhere, I know I'm a good fisherman. I know I am. However, yeah, <laughs> I also, you, know, yeah. you, you said it right there. You've been a professional <laughs> angler from your youth. You, you grew up in the fishing. You, yeah. you started out in the, that world, but you went to another place knowing what you know and still said, hold up, let me get a guide. Let me learn how you guys do it. Even though it was a business venture, you still wanted to do that because you wanted it's... to make sure, hold on, let me see how you do it. And then I can replicate it. Yeah. Yeah, no, always. You'll never know anything. You'll never know everything in fishing. You will always learn till the day you die. And especially in a new area, especially even if you get a little kid from a village, take him. He knows he's been doing it his whole life, especially in the African countries. Those kids live off fish. If they if he doesn't catch a fish, he's going to die. Have you ever been in that, <laughs> in that situation where if, if you come home tonight without fish, your dad is going to give you a clap of your life. So <laughs> take that kid with. He knows what he's doing. It's his survival technique. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, survival works. Um, so yeah. if you're out there fishing, you, even with everything you know, and the bite is not on fire, how do you adjust your tactics? For me, definitely, um, if the fishing's slow, then go deep and slow. That's how it works. Fish is fast, <laughs> top and fast, fishing slow, slow and deep. I don't know if you guys use slow pitch jigs on your side. I was very skeptical my whole life about slow pitch jigging and the whole vibe about the small things catching the big fish. And then I got sponsored a whole bunch of things to try, and they've been on my boat for how long. And we've got very good um, fish finders, or what you call them, stoners on, on the systems on our boats here. And I can tell you when I'm over a school of fish that this is the fish. This is more or less the size of the fish. Um, I can tell you accurately what is under the boat. And this one day we were on the fish, and it was big cob and we just, I've got 12 guys on the boat, all with different bait, and they're just not eating. And eventually I said, now, where is that box that that guy gave me? And we put a jig <laughs> on. And my very first drop, we got a cob of, I think it was 59 kilos, massive cob. And I said, what? And this little jig is, uh, I think it was a 60 gram thing with little tiny, three little the jig para, it was called jig paras. And I said, what is this? And this little thing called this massive fish. And I literally dropped three drops and we got three big fish in a row with 12 guys on the boat with bait on, without a bite. And then from there on, I was like, wait, 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 there's something happening here and started experimenting more with the slow pitch jigging and all of that. Um, if you see other Japanese fish, I mean, they absolutely love the jigging and the slow pitch jigging. And for me, that's just how I learned them. Um, if we trawl lures and everything in the bite slow, you just put deep divers on and you go off the speed. That thing must just dive down and just boop, 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 boop. That's how you activate the fish. Um, also, sometimes if they don't bite, it depends if, if it's a cold front coming in or a cold front leaving with your baromic pressure going up and down. It's very technical depending on which side of the African coastline you are. Um, and then, of course, water temperature, you get you get thermoclines and sometimes the fish are just above the thermocline maybe they're just below the thermocline oh, there's just so many options and you have to just experiment does this work are they here are they there what they're doing what, what's happening um, and i think that is something that i learned um, practically in the spearfishing industry i spearfish a lot as well just on my free time got a few clients but we don't really do that i just do it for fun to get away and for fitness um and if you're actually in the water seeing the the actions of the fish in 
what circumstances, what weather, what barometric pressure. I mean, sometimes you'll, you'll find those big carp and they're literally 10 meters below the boat because there's a thermo, thermocline and the water is ice cold at the bottom and the fish are literally on the surface. And you'll never know that if you don't get in the water and go look for them. I've heard a lot about slow pitch jigging. Yeah, we've got a, there's one guy that I routinely follow uh, here in our area and he taught me some good stuff about fishing. We went out on one trip together, uh, but he and a few other people started a group called slow pitch jigging in Florida. Uh, is the YouTube mm. name is the casting assassin. <laughs> um, but Ryan is his name. <laughs> he He's become, uh, he's just an animal when it comes to fishing, but slow pitch jigging. He is, I know he say he, he won't say he's perfected it. However, <laughs> I will say he's probably a damn good master at it. He, he has really, <laughs> yeah. really explained how slow pitch jigging is such a big deal. And then we got another boat captain that does it routinely with uh, light tackle. Uh, 38 light tackle is our guy up, uh, up here. And he has mentioned how important jigging is on that. He's like, they can, we catch amber jacks with it. He catches monster fish left and right. So yeah. you're talking about slow pitch jigging and how impressive it is. It is a true great thing that really works. Yes, no, definitely. Especially on amber jack. You are... <laughs> Yeah, and the Amberjacks love a slow pitch. <laughs> yeah, the old Volkswagen of a fish. That's a fight and a half right there. <laughs> All yeah. right. So we'll move into the last section here. Perfect transition. One more. It is your final bait check of the episode. So hopefully, like I said before on the second one, you've caught fish because we're... Oh, over an hour in now. If you haven't caught fish, well, let's figure out what's going on there. Maybe we need to change it up to a lure. Maybe we need to change it completely baits. Or maybe, hopefully, if you haven't caught fish at all, you've changed spots because moving is key. Don't sit in one spot and not do anything. This bait check is being brought to you by Deerfield. We all love the Deerfield fab and welding guys. They're building those great carts. They've also got sand spikes. They've got tons of great fun things. Maybe you want something made for you maybe you have an idea reach on out to Deerfield they will get in touch with you and help you out to make that metal idea become reality Deerfield custom fab and weld great stuff all right now that we've gotten into the end here if we got last two questions for you and I'll let you get back to your night so you can <laughs> enjoy your evening <laughs> what knowledge would you give to a brand new angler starting out that's a difficult one yeah Believe in beginner's luck because there is a thing like that. <laughs> That's half of fishing is luck. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Nah. For for a guy, yeah, it's just um some somebody that's new is um what I always say to the guys, um, especially with me being in the tackle industry industry, I see it happen all the time that the the inland guys he decides during the year the, this is going to be his beach holiday and he's going to fish. So he goes to a tackle shop there. This guy's listen here. I want to start fishing. Those guys are professional salesmen. He lives 1,800 kilometers away from the beach. He's been fishing 10, 20 times his life. He is a salesman. <laughs> Do not do that because we get every holiday client that spend ridiculous amounts on tackle and they get to the beach, book a tour with us because they want to now catch their fish on their own tackle. And I tell them, you don't even have to take the tackle out of the car because it's not going to work for what we are doing. <laughs> Always stop, go with a guide that supplies the tackle because that guy's been doing it his whole life. He knows what wor what works, why it works, why the other stuff doesn't work. And he will explain that to you during your day out with him. So first, before you buy anything and waste money, go with the guy, see what they use, why they use it, ask questions, let the guys explain to you, this is why, this is why, and then take it from there and decide for yourself, listen, yeah, this is going to work for me, this is not going to work for me, I don't want a shark rod, I want more of this, and then buy the right thing once. Tackle is extremely expensive at the moment, 
um, like anything else. So be sure that you buy something that you can use. It's pointless having thousands of rands with a tackle sitting in your garage that you cannot use because a salesman sold it to you. Um, that's definitely the one thing that we always tell a guy, a guy will come into my tackle shop. They sh we've, got, we've got decent stores. So there's so many options for a new guy. And if you put yourself in issues, he's got no idea. He's got no idea. So you can literally sell him anything. We always tell the guys, let's rather not go this way. Come fish with us once or twice or three times. Come do a shark fishing trip with us or come do an edible fishing trip with us. And then you can decide which way or do you want something in between that you can catch both species or do you want to specialize in in something. So on, the, on, on the tackle side, always do that. Get the idea before you buy the product. And then just, yeah, learn everything about the area. It is, I get guys here, yeah, they come fish in Marshall Bay, but this guy can tell you back to front what's happening in Madagascar. This is not to see. You need to focus on the area that you're going to fish, what you're actually going to fish for in that area. Don't come and target uh, a fish in, in water where that fish isn't even there. And, yeah, then the, the very most important thing is, um, to catch fish, there must be fish where you are. You can sit there with bait in the water your whole life. If there's not fish in that area, you're wasting your time and your money. Yep. That's the worst one right there. Yeah. It's like, they got to be here. Mm. They got to be here. They're not here. <laughs> They're not here. Yeah, to catch fish, you need fish. Yeah. <laughs> Key ingredient. <laughs> Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. So the final question for you today, Sean, and that is my, one of my favorite ones to ask because you know, you never know on this one, what's next for you. Mm. Yeah. I'm excited because we've got a few new destinations, um, upcoming. Um, we had a whole bunch of guys phoning us. We were actually going to be doing Malaysia and a whole bunch of other places as well. And everything was planned and then COVID came. And everything sort of slacked off and the guys are picking up the, the fishing travel industries definitely slowly, but surely I think that was one of the last tourist um, ventures to, to restart after COVID uh, as everyone was scared of traveling, traveling, all of that. But everything is slowly but surely going to back onto track. The flights are opening up all around Africa. We still have a few up. So we're excited for, for the new destinations and the, the good, the, 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 I'm now in the position where, where I can leave. All my guys are fully operational. They can run all the businesses. They can do the tours. I just tell them this and that and just the key ingredients. So I don't have to focus so much on the business side of everything anymore. And I can actually go into these new places now and, and, and fish for myself and enjoy the new area and, and meet new people. And just for for during during the COVID, uh, with everyone being at home, um, they were watching so many videos, and we got so many new clients coming in into Mossel Bay, into my hometown now. And I'm just excited to meet the new groups and the new guys, and just to just to extend extend the old Go Fish family range. It's very exciting for us. It sounds like it, and I am really excited to see all the stuff that you guys keep bringing in because you get a lot of great content, yeah. but you're going to so many great areas, and now with the national mm. side, it's even better, man. So congratulations on everything that you've started, built, and, yeah. uh, built yeah. and accomplished so far. I mean, I know it's you're just getting warmed up. You're not done yet, but congratulations. Yeah, no, definitely. No, thanks so much. Thanks so much. <laughs> well, thanks again, Sean, for coming on the show. We will talk soon. That's it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. See you soon. Absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hope you enjoyed this episode. We've been talking so much about fishing down through South Africa, but also running through on different parts of the con continent there, if we're talking about it. I mean, we went all the way north to Somalia. That That's pretty far up from that southern area, Mozambique, Angola, uh, lots of great things available. So uh, as I opened up the show, don't forget to take a look at Go Fish Tours. You can take a look at their website. They've got it on social media. Lots of great options for you. If you have questions about the episode, you're welcome to reach out to me, but you're also welcome to send them a message, send Sean 
and Lauren a message, they will get in touch with, uh, they'll happily respond. They're very quick to respond. If you're looking at going out to those areas to go on holiday, vacation, to go fishing, reach out to them to set up your charter. But you also heard there is a housing available. You can get an all-inclusive built together. But that's their world. I don't know anything about that, so you're going to need to reach out to them. If you liked this episode, don't forget to like, share it out there. Help somebody become a better angler. That is the most important part of this episode and show in general. I want to help you become a better angler, whether you're here in the United States or in Africa or Australia, Europe, all those pieces. I want you to get out there and get fish, and I'd love to see what you catch. You've been listening to Finding Demo Surf Fishing. Thanks again for being here. I am out of here. (laughs) 